Hi everyone, this is Geometry Lesson 8-5. This is the last lesson of this topic. Um, problem solving with trigonometry is the title of this topic, this lesson. Um, in this lesson, we'll be able to use trigonometry to solve problems. So we'll use all the information we learned so far in this topic to figure out um, to solve problems. So the vocabulary that we're going to use in this lesson are angle of depression and angle of eleva elevation. So angle of depression is the angle going down. Angle of elevation is the angle going up in real life. Okay, so let's start with model and discuss. A search and rescue team is having a nighttime practice drill. Two members of the team are in a helicopter that is hovering at 2,000 feet above ground level. Okay, part A, the team first tries to locate object A. Okay, they're trying to locate it at night. At what angle from the horizontal line, even with the helicopter, um, should they position the spotlight so that it shines on object A? So. So look at the horizontal line here. That's the even, um, even line, okay? And then that's the altitude, 2,000 feet from the ground. So from that horizontal, horizontal line, not from the altitude, from the horizontal line, what is the angle from the horizontal line to angle to, to the point A, okay? So, let me use a white hand. So that is the horizontal, wait, this is a horizontal line, okay? So from that line, what is the angle so that it, uh, it finds object A? So you're trying to figure out this angle, okay? Not the other angle from the altitude. Okay, so what is it? What do you know? The horizontal line on the ground says it's 3,200 feet. So the opposite angle Okay. You might be thinking of law of sines and law of cosines that we just talked about, but this could be a basic trigonometry question. You know the altitude is perpendicular to the ground, yeah? So that's gonna be a 90 degrees angle, which means we have a right triangle, which means we can use just a simple law of trigonometry to figure this out. First of all, we wanna figure out the angle here, okay? We want to figure out the angle here, and then we know that's going to be 90 degrees together. Um, or whatever, or if you look at this triangle, it's actually, um, it's actually going to be identical because you have 2,000 feet here as well. And that's going to be parallel. Um, the, helicopter, the, the horizontal line even to helicopter is going to be parallel to the ground. That means this distance is actually 3,200 feet, right? Mm -hmm. So then the right triangles are going to be actually um, con congruent triangles. And so the angles are actually going to be the same. But looking at this angle, um, which trigonometry uses the opposite angle and the adjacent angle? Because this is the, the um, hypotenuse, right? That's going to be tangent. So use tangent of that angle. So if this is the angle, tangent alpha is going to be um, the opposite over the adjacent. So katoa, remember that? And so if you want to figure out the angle, you're going to use inverse tangent of 2,000 over 3,200. Uh, so plug that in the calculator. Second or shift tangent, and then 2,000 divided by 3,200. 
It's going to be 0 0.01090874051. Oh, wait a minute. Let me double check. Oh, sorry. I didn't press the shift button. I think I, I pressed it twice so that I canceled out. So shift tangent or, or, or cotangent or arc tangent uh, would be the inverse tangent um, of 2000 divided by 3200 would be 32.0053832. in the calculator. Okay, do you see the calculator? Shift tangent is gonna be the inverse tangent of 2000 divided by 3200 is 32.005 dot dot dot. And so that's going to be about or approximately 32 degrees. Okay. So next, they shine part B. They shine the spotlight on object B. How does the angle of the spotlight from the horizontal line change? So, so how does it change? So first, we want to figure out the angle, right? So from from A to B, your angle changes. That means we don't really have, well, we, we, we still have the right triangle here, but we don't have the same triangle as we did for point A. Well, we do have two identical triangles here, um, but we're gonna still use the tangent because the height is the same. We're just gonna use this distance, 1,800. So, arc tangent, so um, inverse tangent of, uh, instead of instead of 3200, we're gonna use 1800. So 2000 divided by 1800 is gonna be 48 degrees. So this is actually greater angle, right? So it changes. To 48 degrees, it becomes larger. Okay. Part C. In general, how does the angle of the spotlight from the horizontal change as the light moves from object A to object B, from object A to object C? So, in general, if you have the same point and you're getting closer, Okay, you are getting closer, the angle is going to get greater from that point to the to the other. But if your point is greater from your horizontal line on top, your angle is going to get smaller. Okay, so let's write that general rule for the helicopter. So the angle increases for objects closer to the helicopter and the angle decreases for objects farther from the helicopter. So in this lesson, uh, the essential question is how can trigonometry be used to solve real world and mathematical problems? A lot of times it will save you time solving um, multi-step problems. So example one, identify angles of elevation and depression. Okay, identify angle two as an angle of elevation or an angle of depression. Do the same for angle three. Okay, explain your reasoning. So what is angle two? Is it an angle of elevation or is it an angle of depression? Is it going up or down? So from the ground, it's going up. So angle two is angle of elevation. Look at the vocabulary here. An angle of elevation is the angle formed by a horizontal line and the line of slight, uh, line of sight to an object above the horizontal line. So from the horizontal line, if it's going above, and that's the that's making the angle. That is angle of elevation. From horizontal line, four is also going above, right? So that's four. 
form is also angle of elevation. Angle of depression is the angle formed by horizontal line, the line of sight to an object below the horizontal line. So from the horizontal line, you're looking down. So angle one is angle of depression, okay? Angle three is also angle of depression because from the horizontal line, you're looking down, okay? From that horizontal line, you're looking up for angle two. So that's elevation and that's depression. Okay, so look at these pers these people and see how they're gonna look up. If they're looking up, that's elevation. If you're looking down, that's depression. Okay, depression looking down, elevation looking up. All right, so that's very important vocabularies. Please keep them in mind. Try number one, an example one. How does the angle of depression, angle one, compare with the angle of elevation, angle two? Explain your reasoning. So how can you describe how they compare? Can you describe it like I just said? Basically, how are they different? Both angles have what kind of line? They have the same horizontal line, but angle one is looking downwards. Angle two is looking upwards. Okay, from the horizontal line. Okay, it always starts with the horizontal line. So angle one's horizontal line is above angle two, but that person is looking downwards, right? From horizontal. Angle two, from that horizontal line, the other person is looking up. Okay, so let's write that down. Um, both angles are formed by a horizontal line. And Angle one is formed by a horizontal line and the line of sides below the horizontal line. So it's looking downward. While angle two is formed by the horizontal line and the line of sight above. So it's looking upward. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to pull this down here. All right. So you need to look at the point where the angle is. So from the horizontal line, are you looking up or are you looking down? That is going to determine whether it's, a, it's an elevation or a depression. All right, let's look at example two. Use angles of elevation and depression. For a reverse bungee ride, Regan um, stands halfway between two vertical posts. Two bungee cords extend from the top of the post to Regan's waist at the height one meter above the ground. How tall are the vertical posts? So if you've ever went to a reverse bungee jump, um, well, first of all, bungee jump starts from a height and then you fall down. Now I've been bungee jumping before, it's super scary, but it's quite an experience. I would recommend if you don't have any like heart problems, okay? Um, but reverse bungee jump, you start from the ground and then you go up and you're gonna bounce back and forth. Um, so the vertical posts are gonna be some height, X height, but we don't know. We're gonna, we're gonna figure that out. So looking at this graph, we can write an equation to determine the X um, in meters the vertical distance from the top of a post to a point one meter above the ground. So the posts are eight meters apart from each other. And um, wherever the person has, a person's waist is here, it's gonna be a meter above the, above the ground, okay? So looking at these triangles, 
they're going to be um, right triangles because the height is always perpendicular to the ground. And, and one, each of the sides of the triangles are the ground, right? So it's going to be, um, they're going to be right triangles. So tangent of 70 degrees will be the opposite side, the height over the, the ground, the side of the ground, right? So for x would be uh, x divided by x divided by four. If you divide eight by two, this is gonna be four, that's gonna be four. So x divided by four is a ratio of tangent 70, right? Opposite side and adjacent for 70 degrees. And that's gonna be using the, um, using the calculator, you can just plug in four, tangent 70 degrees, make sure your mode is in degree mode. And that's gonna be 10, 0.9899, that's your X. And using that information, you can find the height of the vertical posts. So 10.9899 plus one meter above the ground. So it's all together is gonna to be about 12 meters. So vertical posts are about 12 meters tall. Here's your, here's your answer, okay? Why do we have that one meter? Because that point is at the person's waist. And from the ground is where the post height uh, starts. So you need to add one meter because we figured out the, the distance from, uh, from here to the person's waist, which is a meter above the ground, okay? So it depends on the situation. If you have to add, the, add something or subtract something, you really need to understand the situation. All right, look at try number two. Nadim sees the tour bus from the top of the tower to the nearest foot. How far is the bus from the base of the tower? So if you can figure this out for yourself, come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? All right, you don't even need to figure out the angle for this one, why? Because if you're using 180, 180 feet for this height, then this distance, this horizontal distance should be the same as this distance, right? So you can just use tangent 23 is equal to 180 over the distance x. Yeah? Or if you really want to figure this out, you can also do 90 degrees minus 23, and that's 67. So then you're, you're probably gonna use six, tangent 67 is equal to x over 180. You just, you're just gonna flip the, flip the fraction. But if you use uh, the correct equation, you should get the same answer. So arc tangent, which is um, inverse tangent of 180 over x should be 23. Inverse tangent of x over 180 should be 67, okay? So you can use either way, but it's just easier to, it's just less step to use the angle um, that's given. Okay, so using that equation, your x is going to be 180 divided by tangent 23. So plug that in the calculator. 180 divided by tangent 23. Make sure your mode is in degree mode. That's going to be 424. X is about 424.0534258. So you can say about 424 feet. Okay. Okay, another application example. Example three. Use trigonometry to solve problems. An instructor holds a safety rope at a point C, a point C for a student to rappel from the anchor point T, okay? Um, they're rock climbing. So somebody needs to hold, um, hold another person while they're climbing, okay? Uh, the rope between them currently measures 61 feet, okay? That's the, that's the angled rope. How much more rope should the instructor let out so the student can make it to a resting point at point R? So right now it's 61 feet. And then um, the student is trying to 
the channel go down, I guess, right? From T to R. So then, um, so then, let's, uh, how, how much do you have to let out? So how much rope do, do we need to let out, right? So the angle given here is that this is a perpendicular angle. And that's 75 degrees and the whole thing is 79 degrees which means y here is going to be 79 minus 75 which is just four degrees so that's a really small angle four degrees and then this height this length is going to be 61. so you can use the law of science here um, to figure out some missing information okay sine y um, over TR, so this, this length, should equal to sine X over here, over um, the given information 61. And we know 61 and Y, um, and we want to figure out um, X as well, okay? So we're going to find X and Y. All right, y is going to be four degrees um, and angle C R H. So this one is going to be 90 plus 75 plus this should be 180 because that's a triangle, right? So 180 minus 75 minus 90 is going to be 15. So this is 15. From that, we know this is one line. So so 15 and angle X is going to be supplementary. So 180 minus 15 is 165. So X is 165 degrees. So now that we have figured out some information, we can use a lot of signs to figure out this length TR. So we have every other information. Sign 165 um, over 61 is, should be equal to sign 4 over TR. And now put in the calculator, solve for TR. TR is equal to, so if you multiply 61 on both sides and then divide by sine 165 both sides, okay? And then this is one. And then you multiply TR on both sides, then you get TR is, is equal to 61 sine four over sine 165. Plug that in the calculator, you get about 16. So instructors should let out about six, 16 feet of rope. So this is using law of science, but you might have to figure out some other information that are not given to you. So it might not be obvious, um, but once you figure out all the information that you could figure out, see if you can use law of science or cosines or um, trigonometry. All right, so try number three. In example three, how far is the student from the instructor at the resting point? So now you want to figure out the distance, the resting point R, from R to the instructor C. So you're trying to figure out RC. So basically, what is RC? Okay, so if you can figure it by yourself, come back when you are ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? So, Using, um, using the angles that are given and the distance that we know. Okay. Um, can, we, can we use any information? So, um, so we're still using the triangle, the, the small triangle over here on top, right? We just want to figure out RC. That is the length of the triangle that we haven't figured out, but we know the other information, right? So we're still gonna use the same proportion, uh, the law of signs um, and the proportion that we already have given. So um, sine 165 over 61, is gonna be an exact solution. So we're gonna use that, which is equal to, okay, so let's actually do it. Um, I need to remember. So sine, so 
So sine um, 165 over 61 is a given proportion. Um, that's equal to RC. Wait, no. Sine uh, that's opposite to RC is angle T. And we need to, have we figured out angle T yet? No. And that's okay because we can figure it out. Angle T is going to be 180 minus angle Y, which is four, minus X, which is angle uh, 165. So 180 minus four minus 165 is angle T, which leaves us to angle 11. So angle T is angle uh, 11 degrees. So sine 11 degrees over um, RC is the proportion that we want. Okay. So here, that's the triad number three. And so in order to figure out RC, we're gonna multiply RC on both sides. And then we have sine 11 over here. And then we're gonna multiply reciprocal for sine 165 over 61. So 61 over sine 165. And so that's really, so RC is equal to 61 sine 11 over sine 165. So in your calculator, you're gonna, you're gonna plug in 61 sine 11 um, divided by sine 165. And that's gonna be 44.9709901. So you can say RC is about 45 feet, okay? So first you need to know what the distance is for the student from the instructor at the resting point, right? So looking at the diagram, that's gonna be from C to R. So that's uh, RC. All right, next example, example four. Use trigonometry to find triangle area. All right, part A. How can you use trigonometry to find the area of triangle ABC? You want to find the area of triangle ABC. In order to figure out the area of a triangle, what do you need to know? You need a base, you need an altitude, and then you're going to multiply base times height divided by two, right? So here, your base is AC. Your, your height is BD, okay? You want to know B and H, right? So first, you're going to draw an altitude, BD. And then in order to figure that out, you can write a formula of the area, which is B times base times height divided by two. That is the area of the triangle. And H is basically going to be um, C sine A using trigonometry for sine. Okay, sine A is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which is H over C. So if we um, solve for H, we're gonna multiply C on both sides and get H is equal to C sine A, right? So sine A is opposite over hypotenuse. So multiply both uh, by C you get sine A is H, and then you plug that in into H over here. That's half B times C sine A. And so you can say that the area of the triangle could be half times B times C times sine of A, okay? You can actually apply that to angle B and C using the same um, reasoning and say, oh, area of the triangle could either be, either also be half of A times C uh, times CB. So whatever your length is um, times sine of that included angle divided by two is actually your area of the triangle. Isn't that great? 
So it works for um, angle C as well. Whatever is not the included angle, okay? Uh, whatever sides that are including the angle, so A and B times sine C divided by two is your area, okay? All right, that is one other formula that you can use using trigonometry. All right, part B, what is the area of triangle FEG? So using that area formula, uh, what can we figure out for this one? So in this triangle, you know that area of, um, of this triangle should be half times FE times, so G, so area is half times G times F. So use this formula. Sine of included angle 116. Yeah. So if the lengths of the sides G and F are three and four, so G is three and F is four, what is your area? You can just plug that in into the calculator and that's gonna be about four point five centimeter square. Remember that for your area, your um, conversion units, so your units are gonna be squared. Try number four, A and B. What is the area of this triangle JKL? Using the information, you have um, two legs, two sides, and an included angle. So perfect, you can use the area formula for the trick. Part B, what's the area of this triangle PQR? You only have the sides. So first you're gonna apply the law of cosines to figure out the measure of one angle included between um, whatever. But here um, it says you wanna use PQ and PR. Maybe, uh, maybe that's easier. Then apply the area formula with the sign of the angle measure. So, but it really, you know, it doesn't really matter which angle you get um, as long as you use the right formula, okay? They'll mix up with um, some, some other sides. All right, see if you can try this by yourself and come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? All right, so what's the area of triangle JKL using the uh, trig area formula? So the area should be half times the non, uh, the, the, what is it? The, the lines that include the angle. So 15 times nine, sine of the included angle, 51 degrees. So plug that into your calculator. Um, 15 times nine times 0 0.5, which is one half times sine of 51. It's going to be 52.4573524. So we're going to round that up to about um, 52.46 units square. Okay. Okay. Part B, what's the area of PQR? So first we're gonna apply the law of cosines. So you guys remember the law of cosines from the previous lesson. So it was, so if we say that's P, that length is P and this side is R and this, this side is Q, we can say P square is equal to R square plus Q square minus two times R Q cosine the opposite angle P, okay? So we can say that four square is equal to 10 square plus eight square minus two times 10 times eight times cosine P in order to figure out the angle P. And then later we're gonna use inverse cosine, right? So we know all the sides now. We're going to move everything, try to solve for our P. 4 square, that's 16, minus 10 square, 100, minus 8 square, 64, is equal to negative 2 times 10 times 8 cosine P. And so 16 minus 100 minus 64 divided, all divided by negative 20 times 860, right? 
um, is equal to cosine P, right? And 16 minus 100 minus 64 is negative 148 divided by 160 is cosine P. So P is equal to inverse cosine 148 over 160. We can just cancel out the negatives. And so, um, whoops, sorry. Shift cosine, inverse cosine 148 divided by 160 is going to be 22.33164501, okay? And then make sure you don't round up yet, okay? We're still in the process of calculating, so make sure you have exact um, amounts. And then using that, you can say, you can figure out the area using the trig function, okay? So then your area is going to be one half of 10 and eight and sine of the angle 22.33 dot, dot, dot. Okay, make sure you use as exact amount. So uh, 0 0.5 times 10 times eight times sine 22.33164501. Is going to be 15.19986 dot dot dot. And so that's going to be about 15 point. Um, if you round it up, you got two zero units square. Okay, did you get them right? All right, make sure you do not round up too much until you get to the last step your answer okay all right that was try number four let's summarize our lesson so using trigonometry to solve problems include all the trig measures sine cosine and tangent law of sines and law of cosines so whatever your missing information is and your given information are, you're going to use that um, to figure out, you're gonna use the trig functions to figure out missing information that could also um, help you to figure out other missing information, okay? So angles of elevation or depression um, is basically when you're, when you're uh, looking above or below from the horizontal line, okay? So remember that elevation is looking up, depression is looking down. Area formula is another new formula that we uh, covered in this lesson. So your area of any triangle is going to be half BC of sine or half um, the, the sides that make the angle, um, times sine of the included angle, okay? That's because your H is going to be substituted um, by the sine uh, for the sine formula, okay? All right, so that was the last lesson of this topic. It was a big trigonometry topic. Um, I'm glad you had an intro for this topic because you're gonna learn this again in algebra two. So I hope you enjoyed it. This is one of the one of my favorite topics covered in geometry. All right, that was uh, topic eight. We'll continue with topic nine if we have time. Coordinate geometry. Um, in the next uh, videos. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next topic. Bye.